Okay, we are recording our um, video about uh, this circuit and program. So, so let's just sum up what it does. So using the pot, we're going to control the spinning rotation on the periphery segments. Um, the extra step versus uh, yesterday is that we're going to use the pot here um, to reverse it. So middle position is going to stop, it's going to freeze the segment wherever it is. And if I go to the right, right, because if I spin my, I could spin it, I guess, right? If I, but it'll be all clumsy here, but, right? So if I, my, my wires are all tangled, but it still works, right? So if I'm in, so if I'm on the right, it will spin right. If I'm on the left, it will spin left. But the furthest I go from the center, the fastest it spins, okay? Okay, I renamed it, I added advanced. Um, yeah, so it, it is advanced, doable for grade 11, but it is a bit on the advanced side. Now, keep in mind as well, uh, every year, just for my sanity <laughs> and to keep myself interested in, in, in the programs we do, I like to spice things up, change things around, try new ideas. And so it's hard to predict exactly how hard they will be. So bear with me with this here. Um, this was the project roughly though, uh, two years ago. So uh, it doesn't go harder than this. Um, okay. okay. Uh, so what are we doing? We need to look at our code, right? So let's do a quick sum up. Okay, so I'll talk you through it. So this part here at the top, right? That's necessary for every Arduino code uh, in C. So you need void setup. And then you need this. That's the second thing you need. You need void loop. Okay, and notice each of them have opening curly, closing curly, opening curly, closing curly here. Okay, that's the comment here. Full section, you comment slash star, star slash. And then if you want to just comment a line, you, you do double slash. J those are just simple reviews here. Okay, so in void setup, we need to uh, uh, declare the, the state function of each of our digital pins here. So because we're going to be outputting, we uh, need to declare them as output. So this is all I do here. So in mode zero, uh, and then all the way to six. So this one I don't need to declare because uh, I got six segments, right? So it's just the name of the pin, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So they're here, zero, right? Zero all the way to five. Um, now. Um, Pranav in class brought up a good point. Uh, I hadn't thought of that because because we're simulating here, right? It's, it's all virtual. It doesn't create an issue, but he's using a real board at his place. And he ran into the issue of if you have stuff on pins zero and one, uh, it's going to create an issue while uploading uh, a code. So there's one of two solutions here. You either disconnect temporarily zero and one, right? When you upload your code, or you move all of those wires to the left here, right? Where, where like, it, there's different ways of wiring those in, right? So those are would be the two options. So I won't change it, um, but just be aware of that. So thank you, Pranav. That was very uh, appreciated to share that. Okay, I am declaring, right? Uh, I am, okay, so let's let's just sum up uh, maybe what we had, right? So before creating this part now where it reverses, this is what we had. It's just a for loop, okay? 
Uh, it's commented out now because I don't need it anymore. But this works if all you want is controlling the speed of rotation across the whole range of the pod here, but only in one direction. Okay, so this works for only one direction. Works fine. And so as long as my eye would be lower than six, uh, it would digital write each of those pins, right, in sequence. And um, oh, this this we need to change here. So that was uh, me trying to reuse that. Okay, so anyway, refer to the uh, video just prior to this one for help on spinning in one direction. Okay. All right, for the fun part. Okay, so we got two variables declared here, pot and I. And um, what we do, we declare I as being zero, which is pin zero here, right? And we're just going to use the loop itself, the main loop as our loop. So we start. So we write, so how about I put comments on each of those lines, right? To, to help people see what I'm doing. Um, so maybe let's uh, call this uh, value read from, put, sorry, potentiometer. This here, it's just the uh, segment, basically, from seven segment right so it just identifies which segment we're on easy enough okay so what we do so this is a variable right so it's declared as being zero when we start so we digital write the segment we start on which is zero and so this is going to be replaced by zero when it's running on the first shot and then it's going to be declared as high so it's going to turn on segment zero it's going to read the pot here on A0. Now there's a bit of math here, okay? So that's actually um, an interesting little chunk. So what this does is it takes the value from the pot here at A0. Our full range is 1023, right? So on one side of the sweep, I'm at zero at A0. And if I go all the way to the other side, because I'm reading now five volts, right? That's the max of my range. Numerically, that will give me 1023 inside of the Arduino, right? So it's reading 1023 there. Um, but now we need, we, and originally, right? I was just assigning my delay as being the value read from analog here, right? A zero. So that was super simple. Here, we need to be a bit more fancy. So what we do, is we're going to take that value at A0, minus half of that range from it, right? And so wherever I am, say that I'm just past the middle here, right? Because this is 1024 and this is zero. So the minute I'm just past my middle, right? If I minus 512 from 512, because the middle is 512, Right, so this is going to be zero. Right, so it's going to be a small value here. Right, so say I am at um, 520, which is like about here. Right, I'm going to read eight. Right, because I'm minusing 512 from analog A0. And so if I'm all the way at the tip here, 1023 minus 512, that will give me roughly 512. So I'm reading 512 on this side and zero when I'm at the middle roughly let's focus just on the left for now and what I do is I do uh, next what I do is I, I take absolute value of that numerical value right so I just type apps bracket the whole thing and then this is where it, it takes a bit of imagination to see it but to it's the opposite effect that I want, right? I don't want the number to be small here. I want the number to be big here and small here. So what I'll do, since it's going from 0 to 512, I'll do 512 
minus that value that I get uh, from this math here. So what it will do when I'm just past my zero, this is going to be a high value, 510, say. And then when I'm all at the end, now it'll be zero, right? So it's inverting my range. So I go from uh, around zero here, right? Around zero, I go from a, a small value here to 512, if I don't do this minus here. But then doing this minus flips it. So I go from high value to a low value, which is what I want because when I'm close to zero, I want my time to be long. I want the uh, segment to take their time spinning. So I want a higher value. There's other ways we could have done it, right? It's not the only way. I'm not saying that, but that, that works. For me, uh, feel free to experiment. And then I just put delay being that. Okay. This while here will come back to it. Okay. So this here just writes uh, segment I, basically. Okay. So this part here, let's uh, add a, some comment under. This is to adjust past middle of pot. Pot to have a high value when close to middle, if that makes sense. Okay, we'll leave it like that. Okay, uh, let's go back to the while just later. So what we do is then once, right, once our delay is, is passed, right? So we've, we, we've written the segment and then we waited, right? And then we're going to erase it. So this is just to erase my segment, right? So that it doesn't stay there. Because otherwise, if we didn't erase, the whole perimeter would just write up with, uh, it would just all light up one after the other, but then it would just become a solid zero. And that's useless, right? So we need to erase it, right? So this is uh, segment I, erase segment I. Okay. Okay, so this is um, an interesting part here. So when my value that I'm reading from analog zero, when uh, it's under 512, so when it's on this side, right? I want it to minus my I by one. And if it's not smaller than 512, which means it's greater, I'm going to increment my I. So that's easy. So why am I doing this? Um, this controls, this if controls rotation, direction of rotation. Of rotation, right? So if it's under 512, I'm going to it decrement my eye. I think that's a word. Decrement. <laughs> it's okay. Decrement. That is a word. Okay. And then if it's higher, right? Else, uh, I'm going to increment it. So notice here the syntax. Very important. I could clean it up a bit here. Just make it this way. Right? So notice you got if and then you got bracket bracket and then curly curly, right? This is the theme, right? And then in else you do bracket bracket and then inside of it, you're going to put your code, okay? What you want to do there. Okay, now that it's decremented or incremented, we check for if we are at the end of the range. So what that means, right? Because we got five segments, six segments, right? It starts at zero, right? So that's why five, right? Because it's six. So here, uh, uh, checking 
if so if it's greater that means we're spinning clockwise checking if we need to restart at segment uh, zero right so that's clockwise right because we just incremented it here so if we're at five just before we hit this if we're on segment six with five sorry it's confusing right on the sixth seg segment but it's on numerical five right so this one here once we hit here we need to go back to zero because it wrote it goes back to zero here right so that's what i'm doing here so that we restart at segment zero so once we go at up from five that means we're going clockwise so we need to go to zero and here it's going to be the opposite checking if we need to restart at segment now it's five because we're going counterclockwise right so if we go one zero and then we need to go to five basically so here it's five so now that's counterclockwise so that's all it is. And then that's the end of my code here. Okay. The while, all this does here is it. Um, there's probably a faster way to do this here, but that works. Like cleaner, I mean. It's pretty clean, but I, I always like to come up with the cleanest, right? Like that's something all people coding should aim for. Um, so here, I did notice when we were running the code in class, I did notice that it's struggling to on the pot here to to remain a. Let me just check. I'm still recording. Okay. So so this is what the code currently does here, right? So if I go way on the right. Right, so it's spinning faster and faster and faster. And then as I go closer to the center, it's starting to slow down, right? Which was the goal intended. And notice if I, let me pause that. If I comment the while out here, right? Just for temporarily, right? We'll see what happens is when I reach the middle, I'm, I'm just unable to make it stall. And then instantly it goes the other way. So there's something going on here. Not sure what it is. Um, but so anyway, I, I, I just. Right, so let's watch the uh, behavior before we go further. So it speeds up, speeds up, speeds up. Okay, very nice. Okay, so it's, it's exactly what I wanted it to do. It's pretty good here. It slows down. You know what? Let's make this value actually twice here. Hmm. I'm just thinking what's going to happen. Let's try it. So it's a lot of brackets, but computers and machines like that can deal with brackets without issues. Two stars, right? That's times. Uh, so it should slow down further, which is what I want. Okay, so that works nice. It's a bit slow here. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, ju I just felt that the, when I get close to the middle that it wasn't slow enough. I might actually be able to stall it now. So see, I wasn't able. The minute I cross over, it's, it flips. Okay, so this is what the while here is for. Let's stop. So what it does is it checks if my analog read is between five, right? So remember my middle value is 512, right? That's right at my zero, right? Middle. And so what I did is I just added 12 on both sides. So if my analog read value is, is under 512 plus 12, which is 524, and 
this is what uh, ampersand ampersand is. That's the and logical operator. Um, and if it if analog read the value if it's higher than 500. So basically, if it's contained between 500 and 524. Okay. If it reads that, so while it's that, while this bracket here um, outputs true, literally just do nothing. So it's empty, right? So it delays and then it just stalls here as long as my plot will be in between. So it works, works, works really nice. So we'll see it'll be stalled right from the get go. And the minute I start spinning, right? So it goes faster and faster. So it's very nice. And when I'm close to the middle, right? Which was the effect that I was looking for, but I had to force it in here, right? So this is what the while does. It forces the stalling. Okay. Well, that's basically it. So I'll just put some comments here. Uh, allows uh, forces uh, stall at middle position. Let's just put it on the next line. Right? Forces stall at middle position on on plot. So this is what that does. Okay, so this is our whole code. So nothing fancy, but it's, it's this, is, this is where I this is where I'm trying to bring all of you guys. Okay, it's to be able to apply it. Okay, uh, it's it's not about just learning our like you know if and while and that kind of stuff, right? I want you guys to be able to do something with it, putting all of those pieces together. Okay. So, so hope that helps. Okay, this is your whole code, and uh, we'll see you in class.